Thank you folks for clicking on the video. If you'd like to be informed when new videos go live, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell notification icon. Please feel free to like, comment, and share the video with family and friends as it really does help the channel grow in the current YouTube algorithm structure. Hello everybody and welcome back to Swamp Dog Games. Today we're going to be reviewing Basic Fantasy. This is the third edition of this game by uh, Chris Gonnerman. Uh, it's available for free from basicfantasy.org. It's not the flashiest game out there. It's not even necessarily my favorite rule set or a rule set I particularly use that often in my games. But I believe this is a great intro to Dungeons and Dragons slash OSR slash OGL slash D20 RPG gaming out there and is an excellent example of the OSR community as well as the uh, role playing game community as a whole. This review will be only focusing on the third edition. There may slash probably will be a fourth edition of this book out shortly due to reasons of wizards messing around the OGL. But when that occurs, there'll be an update video in this corner. Uh, until then, let's jump into basic fantasy. As I said, these books are completely free. One of the greatest things about the OGL was it created a huge uh, community supporting open source gaming content for gaming creators. Chris Gonneman created the basic fantasy. This definitely falls into the OSR style of um, RPG gaming. OSR, if you're not familiar with old school renaissance, old school role playing, insert a, a meaning of the acronym here is a genre of role-playing games that take the content that was released from Wizards via the open gaming license and tries to replicate earlier versions of the Dungeons & Dragons role-playing game. The reason why people do this, and I'm a believer in this myself, is that after you fix up some of the wording, clear up some of the language so a modern gamer can understand it, I believe the core mechanics of old style D&D &D are superior to the direction that Wizards has taken the game. I do believe that old style D&D &D is superior to a lot of other RPGs, the directions they've taken the game. The rules are simpler. They allow for bigger focus on theater of the mind, role-playing engagement, less reliance on VTT technology, and turning it effectively into a... Um, video game where the AI is replaced by the game master and allows for much better storytelling engagements in the fantasy setting. This book is uh, probably soon to be a collector's item is the print on demand. You can get this via this specific printing was through Amazon's print on demand, which is five bucks as part of a condition of this game. Anyone can print out, this game and sell it so long as you only sell at the cost to cover printing. So from Amazon, $5 covers the printing, the shipping to you. Um, I had prime at the time and, uh, could get it uh, delivered direct to my house within a week. Services like Lulu can do a hardcover version of this. Um, and you can print your own it being open sourced. Uh, anyone can build on top of this game. The core mechanics uh, out of all OSR intro books uh, it has, of course, the uh, community that helped uh, originally create it. A brief introduction to uh, RPGs in general. It has a very limited class selection. It only has the cleric, the fighter, the magic user, and the thief. Uh, starting off with variable XP requirements. This uh, uses the older or 3.5 and D&D uh, and up version of XP growth, which is fighting monsters. Uh, this, the magic spells only go to level six. This does include character levels up to level 20, but does separate out race from 
class in the system. It also uses Ascending Armor class instead of Thaco. Um, it doesn't even provide the option in the rule book, though you could incorporate it yourself for Thaco. It um, uses the standard D20 for most checks. It uses the older style death saves, wand saves, breath saves instead of the attribute saves to resolve actions. And it doesn't focus on skills the way modern D&D does. It assumes that skills are part of the backstory that you create for your character and relies more on the characters explaining their actions and what they're trying to accomplish to the game master rather than a set of uh, verbose rules to explain how to resolve actions. An example being find traps. There's uh, the disabled trap feature, which the thief has, but it relies more on uh, the player describing how they're locating the trap to find the trap rather than a simple DC check to resolve it. Example being, you have a pitfall trap with a button on the, or pressure plate on the floor that if a certain weight uh, lands on that pressure plate, it'll activate the trap. Well, the players, if they describe how they're looking for pressure plates, then they beat the trap. They don't have to roll for it. Only if they want to disable the trap, uh, or here they call it the remove trap option, do you actually roll an option to try to permanently disable it from being triggered. It does do one of the things that I hate the most that puts some skills outside of the class description, like clerics, the turn undead is described later in the book and the charts rather than with the classes themselves. The uh, magic lists are what you're familiar with from most OSR products, borrowing a lot from 3.5 uh, and 5e spell descriptions as provided by the OGL. It includes everything that the players and game masters need to run a game, directions on creating adventures, basic types of traps, basic types of dungeons environments, the combat rules, explaining monster morale in the system, the level up potential. The monster stat blocks, this is honestly one of my favorite manners of presenting this. Rather than games like... Um, old School Essentials, which is my preferred OSE product that has everything so tightly constricted it can sometimes be hard to make out uh, the text. This does have everything stacked on top of each other, so you just have to look across and can see what the stats are for the various um, creatures, but still very tight, shortened, and not prone to wasting a lot of space the way 5e can. To quote from the Bard Barian. Compared to this, this is rubbish. This is brilliant. This is an abomination. This is a gargoyle. Yes, all the information without all that wasted space. And you get to pack in a lot more uh, information. The artwork is all community contributed to the project. So you can see uh, somewhat varying art styles depending upon what is being depicted in this game. Because, again, there's so many community artists that are donating art to this project. Uh, bear in mind, the art is essentially licensed to the project. It's not uh, open source. Uh, most of it the same way uh, the rules are. So though you have a lot of your basic um, OSR OGL style monsters uh, in here, the artwork is not included, uh, generally speaking, in that license details for the game master to create um, treasures as well as some basic um, encounter suggestions uh, rules for spells research and how to design uh, adventures the only thing i believe that this book in its present form is missing to make it the absolutely perfect beginner's intro guide is in the case of using 
swords and wizardry as an example, there's a basic one page dungeon explanation that includes the actual dungeon as well as a one or sorry, two page with map, um, beginner setting environment. I believe if these two could be included in this book, it would be the perfect example of a beginner 101 style role playing game to hand out to new beginners. Uh, so they have the perfect jumping off point to get into uh, fantasy role playing. This book, however, you might want to grab it from basic fantasy while you can, because of current chicanery with the wizards and the OGL, the community, and by the way, a quick shout out to the basic fantasy community. You guys are amazing. The amount of work that they've put in into making this open source OSR game to begin with was amazing. And now that their um, fantasy, their pet project is under threat with this new OGL chicanery, they are going through and helping out Chris Gonnerman go through and scrub all uh OGL SRD content, that's an open gaming license uh, system reference document content from their book, so they can continue to provide basic fantasy in the original intent, being an open source product that is available to the community. The resources that are available to the community, even though this base book only has those four classes, there are multiple other classes that are still kind of in open beta. Um, some of them have had like 20 different revisions that they have on the basic fantasy website. If you go to the download section and scroll down, they have, uh, new races, new classes. Again, some of them have had multiple revisions that have already come out. They are still technically in play test slash beta version, but they are for the most part, relatively speaking, usable. Uh, in the basic fantasy game, they are just currently separate uh, for right now. Though with potential changes, they might finally be getting around to actually 1.0ing these and releasing them um, into the core rulebook now that they are trying to switch from SR. The, the OGL SRD into making it a Creative Commons license to be able to survive the garbage from Wizards right now. Though they do have a lot of work as they have a core rule book uh, that is 167, 68 pages long, uh, as well as multiple uh, adventures, add-on equipment guides, monster bestiaries, one of my favorite adventures that they provide completely free is this one here, the BF1 Morgan's Fort, which I will be doing another review on later and showing you how this is a modern open source revision of uh, the Keep on the Borderlands. Uh, this one's in their 32nd revision and is one of the best intro adventures out there and again, completely for free. But another thing that makes this game so good for Game Master's players is you don't like anything in here, go ahead and change it. They even provide you with the ODT, that is the open document text format, so that you can come in and edit these adventures to your heart's content. Please be aware, though, that these are extremely heavily formatted ODT documents, Microsoft Word does not necessarily play well with these um, because of formatting differences. It doesn't work the best in Microsoft Word. However, you can get a completely free um, et, um, text editing software called LibreOffice that works well with this. In fact, um, this is based off of the old OpenOffice and the open document text format was part of that project. LibreOffice continues that tradition to be able to um, allow for people to come in after the fact and edit these documents to their heart's content. The support community in the blog and forums is one of the best out there. I cannot under... Um, 
state just how important they are to keeping this product alive and the community going for it, particularly they're working going now line by line through all their documentation, trying to change it so that it is no longer beholden to the SRD and will remain an open source game. To show you how open source it is, there is another product that's based almost entirely off of basic fantasy. Uh, there is Odyssey and Overlords. Not only is it designed to be compatible with basic fantasy, most of the rules outside of the race and class uh, design in this book are almost... Uh, word for word taken out of the basic fantasy SRD. I sadly have a fear that this is also going to be subject to a significant amount of changes to be um, not compliant, but to get around being beholden to the new OGL uh, erroneous terms. But the fact that a community so loves this book that they are willing to help the creator go through line by line to scrub it clean of everything that wizards could uh, try to screw them over and make sure that this book remains completely in the open source spirit that it was intended to be is one of the reasons why I highly support this game and believe wholeheartedly it is one of the best out there. Rules wise, not the fanciest. Rules wise, not my favorite. The book is very simple, very basic. It's the vanilla of the OSR. There's not much that really stands out from the book itself that screams, this is a product for me, uh, It, but it is very simple. It has a lot of support for new gamers and dungeon masters who have never played a RPG big game before, and the amazing support from the community, the amazing job that Chris Gonnerman has done in supporting what the true spirit of gaming is creating open source products that people can monetize if they build off of it, but releasing the core material so that others can use it to foster creative gaming and to further this hobby to the amazing uh, corners that it can be taken is why I believe this game is one of the most important OSR products and one of the most important RPGs out there and why out of any other RPG that I could, that I grade solely on the rules, I argue that Basic Fantasy is a natural 20. You want your flashier game? It's always out there. You want your crunchier rules? Go find uh, uh, either Phoenix Command or one of the older versions of Shadowrun. You want whatever you want go ahead and do it. But if you want a good, solid base with a community that embraces the true spirit of gaming, that is through basic fantasy. And I believe that the community is what I'm rating with this and they deserve this natural 20 roll for this review of basic fantasy third edition. Again, a reminder, if slash when they have to create their fourth edition, there will be a card linking that in the corner. Until then, please grab this book because it will be a collector's item soon, probably, as they are having to switch over from OGL 1.0a into a Creative Commons license to protect the spirit of the RPG community. I hope you like this review. I hope you try out this game. I hope you have it permanently part of your collection, and it's so easy. It's free. Please do so. The PDFs are all available online as well as the ODT documents. Play some of this. Uh, introduce family and friends to this game. Let them know that the core of the gaming hobby is built on making supportive products that others can build on to facilitate fantasy uh, people's imagination and fantasy development, not sticking it all behind a walled garden paywall where wizards or any other company can nickel and dime you in microtransactions only because you want a different color for your character's hammer. This is open gaming. This is what the RPG community is truly about. Get basic fantasy. 
I hope you like this review. If you do like this review, please subscribe, share this video out with family and friends. We'll be doing more RPG reviews going forward in the future. Um, if you want, uh, hop into my social media at thekendigreport.locals.com and help join in the conversations we try to figure out, hopefully making our own game to create an open source game core rule set that can bypass wizards and hopefully create uh, our own community of new a new generation of gamers that get to experience gaming in its open format, not behind its closed wall ga gardened format that wizards is trying to foster. See you all next time. Have a good day. And remember, may all your die roll great. And slash, if you can recommend another, uh, like closing statement. I'm still looking for one. Thanks all. See you next time. Bye.